Get ready to take your Heimer game to the next level. Hello felines, if you're looking to master Heimerdinger, then you've come to the right video. In this video, I will share 5 useful tips for dominating the rift with Heimerdinger. Tip number 1. Two easy ways to solo Baron. No wonder Heimerdinger is such a revered inventor. He can easily, I repeat, easily solo the Baron. Here are two ways we could go about defeating the Baron. The first way is walking near the Baron when we have our turrets ready to go. Then put down our three turrets. Make sure we get close to the Baron so that the Baron will hit us instead of our turrets and also weaving our W and E when we place down our turrets. Place an empowered turret on the other side of the pit using our ultimate and then get out of the pit to change the aggro. The second way allows us to solo the Baron over the wall. First, put down the three small turrets near the blast cone. Then hit the fruit to set the turrets into the Baron pit. Put down our empowered turret and then W and E whenever possible. Working as intended. Tip number two, non-empowered ability placements. We can make the most of our abilities by placing them correctly. When we use the Q ability, we should place the turrets further apart if we want to prevent the enemy from destroying our turrets using AoE. On the other hand, if we are looking to attack the enemy or stay in one area, it's a good idea to put our turrets closer to each other. Additionally, we can stack the turrets to make it seem like we have only placed one turret when in reality, there are three turrets here. This is the fundamental logic behind turret placement. I will delve deeper into this topic later on during the early game optimization section of the video. There's more to explore and discuss. Goggles on! When using the W ability, it is not recommended to aim the rockets directly at the target, even if the goal is to hit all 5 rockets. I only ever aim the rockets at the enemy when I think the enemy is AFK. This is because the W ability works a little differently than other skills in the game. The rockets converge on the cursor, so if we aim directly at the target, the rockets can be easily dodged. If we want to hit all 5 rockets, we want to put our cursor in front of the enemy champion model. We can still hit the 5 rockets this way, but because the rockets now have a fan shape, it's harder for the enemy to dodge. Sometimes hitting some rockets is better than hitting none at all. We can consider bringing our cursor closer to us so that we can create a larger fan shape when necessary. Although we deal less damage this way, the area of effects is bigger. For the E ability, the further away we are throwing the grenade, the more we have to predict the scale shot. If the enemy is just on top of us, then we can just throw the grenade exactly where they are. Keep in mind that the grenade stuns anyone directly hit and slows surrounding units. The AoE for the slow is big. We can use it to extend our E range. Fascinating, isn't it? Tip number 3. Early game optimization. Heimer's early game will vary depending on the role we are playing. For laners, if our teammates don't need our help, we can start setting up our turrets before the minions even arrive. Don't just put the turrets down immediately though, because the enemy can destroy all our turrets and then recall. If we put down the turrets later, at least they don't have the time to recall. It's better to wait a little bit to make sure we're safe and put down the turrets one by one. Remember to use the turret placement logic we talked about earlier. Keep in mind that no matter how we place the turrets, never stand with our turrets after we place them. Instead, position ourselves at the edge. If we stand too close, the enemy can damage us and the turret with their AoE. By staying at the edge, the enemy will have to choose between attacking us or the turret. Not enough variables. Hmm, not nearly enough variables. During the laning phase, we should take full advantage of Heimer's passive. Heimer's passive, Hextech Affinity, allows Heimer to gain bonus movement speed while near an allied turret or a turret deployed by him. When I first learned about Heimer's passive, I thought this means that staying near towers provides good defense because he can get away from the enemy and dodge abilities easier. After playing Heimer, I learned that Heimer's passive is even better than I thought. Not only can we use the 
the turrets for defense, but we can also use them for offense. We can use the turrets to walk up to the enemy. If the enemy wanna attack us back, then just retreat. We have the bonus movement speed, and they don't. Many new Heimerdinger players make the mistake of thinking that always having 3 turrets out will keep them safe. In reality, this provides a false sense of security because we're putting our Q on cooldown for no reason. Only put down the turrets when we need to. It's also important to note the nuances of the W and E abilities. Even if we follow the W placement tip that we have previously discussed, we might still miss our rockets due to the minions. This is because Heimerdinger shoots his rockets from the back of his head, so we have to keep this in mind. Try not to W with minions behind us. E is a core ability. We usually want to back off if we miss our E. It's very dangerous to be in an aggro stance when we don't have our E up. If the enemy struggles, with wave clear and we have used our abilities efficiently, we will find ourselves in a situation where we push the minions up to the tower, in which case we can set up our turrets like this. The support role plays like laners with a few minor differences. These are the two early game turret positions for Heimer support. Putting our turrets in the bush can help us in three ways. Firstly, it grants us vision. Secondly, it can help us maintain control over the bushes, making it difficult for the enemies to sneak up on us. And lastly, it can help us avoid messing up our ADC's farming, since our turrets will be placed on the side. Choose the first one for normal situations. Choose the second one if you are against long-range champions like Seraph. This is because long-range champions are good at pushing waves, so we want to have a turret in the middle of the lane to help with the push. When we play against long-range supports as Heimer, we don't want to be stuck under a tower and get harassed left and right, so we gotta push the waves. Aha! 42! I knew it! Now! Uh, what was the question again? We can make our ADC's job easier by switching the turret's target away from the minion that the ADC is trying to see us with our auto attacks. This way, our ADC can see us better. As for the jungle role, I don't jungle much, but I found a Master Heimer jungle OTP on OPGG. You can look at his jungle passing and gameplay if you want to learn Heimer jungle. Tip number 4. Fighting for objectives. When fighting for objectives, it's important to arrive early to set up turrets. It's perfectly normal for our turrets to get destroyed during fights. If we want to deal maximum damage without losing our turrets, we can try ambushing the enemy from bushes. It's a sneaky strategy, but it might just do the trick. As long as the enemy is not worn or somehow very tanky, we should be able to melt them. We do a lot of damage when we all in. One step closer to greater understanding! Tip number 5. Combos. Here are some useful combos. The first combo is our QQQERW combo. This is the combo we want to use for the ambush strategy mentioned in the last tip. The second combo is the EQ combo. Enemies will often avoid going near our turrets. If we don't put down all our turrets, they will let their guard down and then we can throw them the EQ combo. If we want to, we can also take this further by doing EQWQ or EQRWQ. The third combo is the E Flash combo. As previously discussed, it's easier to land our E when we are close to the enemy, so this is what this combo is for. Other combos that use the same logic include the W Flash combo, the RW Flash combo, and the RE Flash combo. If we have the Hextech Rock Belt, we can also follow the flash up with its active, so for example, we can do RW Flash Rocket Belt. Out of all the empowered abilities, the upgraded rockets do the most damage. With Flash and Rocket Belt, we can increase our chances of hitting the rockets. Another important combo is the RE combo. Even though our empowered grenade doesn't do as much damage as our empowered turrets or rockets, RE is the best combo to use if we want to secure a kill because the upgraded grenade is hard to dodge. We can take this combo further by doing REQW. Brain over brawn! Tip number 6. Fighting for objectives. 